I'm hoping that this could focus. Uh, but either way, this is a film that I shot, the Fujifilm Superior 100, which expired in 2002. Now, obviously, Fuji makes a ton of different films. They all have different formulas and they render color all differently. But I think there is one thing that we can all agree on that so well categorizes the films made by Fuji. That is this greenish, sometimes borderline hellish cast uh, that their films tend to exhibit. This role was gifted to me by Rowan and Riley, who are friends of the channel, and they told me that the history of this role is unknown. So I basically just went in and did what if I thought was right for this role of film, um, and quite reasonably, the photos did not turn out to be what they could have been. And so this is a perfect opportunity for me to go over some of the things that I should and should not have done now that I've received the scans and to show you a bit of what the lighting was like, um, and the type of results that they produce and also just to give you an idea of how your Fuji films might look like in 20 years. Without further ado, let's go right into it. Oh, hang on, before you get into that, I do want to mention that if you are thinking of trying out some expat film that you do not have a history of, it would be a good idea to get at least two of the same thing because then you have the first roll you could basically spoil and screw um, which is basically what I did here. In fact, I'm quite surprised that out of the 36 exposures, I still had uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. I still managed to get 13 photos that are sort of okay-ish uh, out of the 36 frames. So yeah, like if you're thinking of getting spread film that does not have a known storage history, you will probably take a roll or two before you can really figure out how to get the best out of it. So yeah, that's my two cents. In terms of rating the film speed, it expired in 2002, which is squarely 20 years ago from now. And so, according to this general rule of thumb where you overexpose every one decade that it goes expired, on this occasion we'll have to go two stops over uh, to compensate for this expiry. It was rated at 100, so one stop over would be 50, another stop over would be 25, and I just felt that it would be cool to make it 20, so that's what I did. A lot of people have said to me that, you know, you can't really follow uh, rules like these because it's meaningless, every rule is different and therefore you can't really know for sure. Yes, 100% that's correct. Um, you can't really predict how film ages. It's really down to the individual role, but usually this rule puts you in the right ballpark, if that makes sense. So by raising the film at 20, I was able to get usable shots out of the role. With the camera that I was shooting on, technically I could go even lower with the film rating. I could go as low as say 16 or 12, but then I settled at 20 because there's no point. I was shooting on this lens, this, I hope you see it. Anyway, this lens stops down to 2.8 max. And similarly with my shutter speed, I think with this camera, with this setup, I can handle confidently max one over 90th of a second. And so these things are both limited and therefore it wouldn't really make sense for me to lower the ISO anymore um, because that's the max I can do. Yeah, so in other words, had I known how these photos would have turned out at the time I shot them, the rating would not have mattered because I would have gone with the max knowing that they would come out slightly underexposed anyway. This was the first shot of the roll. It was shot during midday and it was heavily overcast. So there wasn't a lot of light to begin with, especially in the shallow areas. On top of that, there was also this really dense fog that I think also did have an impact on uh, how much light was able to reach the sensor. So as you can see, many of these areas turned out to be massively underexposed and, and they're certainly not of a flattering quality very noisy, very grainy. As for this, I was actually really surprised that 
anything at all actually came out of it because at this point I was well into the woods and I was also shooting into some shadows. Definitely does not sound like the most promising thing to do with film, but whatever, I managed. This was obviously a silhouette play because it just couldn't go wrong and when the thing itself doesn't look that flattering, this is the kind of thing that you could, you know, resort to. When I got the scan from my lab, I did consider just reducing everything into pure black so that it becomes more like a monochrome photo and we won't have this disgusting green uh, in the bottom of the frame. But on second thought, because the color was there, and it was an organic reaction from the film, I decided to just keep it as is. Oh, and now we have a picture of me. Um, I'm not saying that you could go shoot portrait work on this, but it's actually not bad. I'd absolutely use this on my WhatsApp profile picture, for instance. What really interests me though, uh, especially in comparison with the previous shot is how the sky rendered different colors. So in this picture, the sky had more of a bluish hue to it. Well, not exactly blue, but like somewhere between blue and magenta, whereas that wasn't there in this previous shot. As we go through more shots, this blue-green pairing of colors will become more apparent. All the photos at this point so far had been shot with 1 over 125th of a second just to play safe because obviously I don't want to end up with, you know, shaky photos. But there were a few times where I caught the display on my camera inside the viewfinder flashing. The camera has always been on shutter priority and because it has a light meter, why not use it? If the camera detects that there isn't enough light in the frame with the current settings, the aperture display would then flash, if that makes sense, to tell me that, mate, we're already on the max aperture that's possible on your lens, but we still do not have enough light and so you will have to up your game. That happened for a few times before, I decided to just go for 1 over 90th of a second on my shutter, which is something I think I should have done right from the beginning. So yeah, similarly with these shots, I was shooting under shades and it was also a heavily overcast day. This 
shot I really like and it was probably one of the most challenging shots that I've done in this role. First of all, it was raining. It wasn't just the kind of drizzle that you have every single day, it is proper actual rain. And so I had to hold an umbrella on my left hand and I had to shoot on my right. And also the wind was unbelievable. I could barely stand in the wind and also bear in mind that the shutter speed was at one of a 90th of a second, which is obviously slow enough to send everything into a massive blur. But at this point, I just really wanted to take this umbrella shot, probably saw light inspired. And so I find myself all of a sudden shooting into the sun um, under the rain while the wind was still blowing crazy. So it wasn't really the easiest thing to get this asterisk uh, in the top right of the frame. But apart from that, I also really like how the colors render, perhaps because there was a bit more light in the shot that it was more properly exposed. The greenish cast was more bearable and I also really like how the skies are kind of dramatized by a touch of blue. At this point, I went out of the park and I started shooting things that are more urban in nature and more city-like. And seeing these pictures actually confirmed my theory that Fuji films are probably best used to shoot anything but parks. Um, I think these colors look really nice. I mean, you can still definitely notice some greens, especially in the shadows, but they come up much more subdued and much more flattering for some reason. This applies obviously not just to expired Fuji films, also to fresh Fuji films. But yeah, that's potentially another thing to keep in mind as to what to do and what not to do when shooting on Fuji film stocks. FYI, that selfie that you see on the thumbnail is also taken with this roll of film. I just didn't want to put it in the video because if someone sees it on full screen, they'll probably cringe. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next Saturday. Bye!